the vlogaline kickoff of Sip Sip Knit. I've recruited three of my best yarn friends here in the area. We're all from the Pittsburgh area. Some uh, just on the outskirts, but um, yeah, we all know each other kind of through fiber -y stuff, but we'll get into that during the, the intros, I guess. Um, so, start with Lindsay and uh, <laughs> tell you a little bit about herself and her fiber arts. Yeah, so I started knitting um, around, I think like 2014, maybe 2012 actually. Um, my grandmother always crocheted, my mom always quilted and did crappy things, so it's just, you know, part of my background to do something crafty. So I learned how to, I taught myself how to knit. Um, I was doing a lot of hats and smaller projects. And then um, I went vegan and it was just one of those things where I had a lot of wool yarn and I uh, just, it was one of those, another thing that I had to like, ch felt like I had to change. So I kind of took a break from it. And then right before COVID, I guess it was 2019, um, me and Jenna were friends already. <laughs> and I had moved to Pittsburgh where Jenna lives and we just decided we were gonna start having craft nights and um, she wanted me to teach her how to knit. So I like kind of reintroduced myself to it and then I taught her and we just took off from there. <laughs> and now we're knit I'm knitting sweaters and shawls and all kinds of things. I haven't stopped. Nice. And, and since that's it's it. Sip Sip Knit, what are you drinking? I am drinking um, by Voodoo Brewing. It's called the Lacto Cooler. It's a sour. It's the only beer I've ever drank a whole can of because I do not like beer. But for some reason, I like, I like it. It's one of my faves. Mm. I haven't tried it, but it sounds good. It's good. And Voodoo is a local to the area brewery. There's a few around this area, one in New Kensington, near where Lindsay lives. It's a cool yeah. space. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice addition to the community. <laughs> <laughs> to my drink first because I want to take a sip of it. Um, this is Evil Genius's Trick or Treat. Um, it's a chocolate pumpkin porter and typically I would be drinking something like what Lindsay has because sours are usually the only beers I like but I, I also once pumpkin beers came back for the fall I grabbed a few and I tasted this one and um, it's really good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So I knew Kim through Pittsburgh Twitter and running, trail running. I would say ultra running, but I've never actually finished one. Uh, I always had aspirations, but I've never actually finished one. Um, and I grew up sewing and my mom crocheted, my grandmother crocheted, and I knew how, but I never really clicked. And uh, my best friend crochets, she made her um, wedding bouquet of flowers. And today is her wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary, Jules, love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on, I would see Kim's Instagram posts go by of the gorgeous things she was knitting and thought, one of these days I'm gonna try that. One of these days I'm gonna try that. So I went to join fabrics and I got some yarn and some needles and I would fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and never really got anywhere and then one day on a work trip stopped at a, a small yarn shop bought some Malabrigo she, Kim taught me how to find a pattern and that was uh <laughs> coming up on a year ago and pretty much always within reach of my knitting needles ever since Did I put you in the direction of Ravelry I think? you did you did. I remember that. <laughs> you did. Yes. Yeah. So. I've only ever finished one sweater. This is it. Beautiful. It is beautiful <laughs> and amazing. Considering. It's an amazing first sweater. Yeah. yeah. The fade and sure. everything. For the, a first sweater and first, you know, one of your first projects. Yeah. And the first thing was the cowl, into. which I ruined when I washed it. <laughs> Learned that the hard way. I'll make another one, I promise. But I. 
wanted to make this something with this yarn because years ago I bought I bought this the dark blue yarn. My uh, childhood best friend we grew up next we grew up next door to each other. His wife um, dyes yarn, uh, Jean of Destination Yarn, and I bought this yarn from her years ago without yet knowing what to do with it. So as soon as um, I started to get an idea of what I was doing, I hunted down a pattern for what to do with this yarn, but I didn't have enough for one sweater, so since I also found this in Columbus on another work trip, I put them together, the dark, mm -hmm. dark well together. Jean's yeah. Harvest Moon and um, this variegated blue. It's an awesome thing. Yeah. Love my turn? Your turn. Your okay. turn. So I'm Jenna. Um, I, like Lindsay said, Lindsay did all the hard work for me. <laughs> I don't have to tell my story now. <laughs> but no, um, I'd always wanted to learn how to knit. Uh, my grandmother uh, tried to teach me, it didn't stick. And then Lindsay and I agreed to commit to learning craft, like different crafts, and knitting was one of them. And she taught me um, right before the pandemic started, which was a huge blessing. Um, so we started knitting together, and then um, Kim and I had been friends a long time ago, um, lost touch, and then I saw her kind of posting um, her crochet things and knitting things and reached back out. She reached out to me and um, kind of reconnected over knitting and other things, and yeah, so we've all been knitting together now for about a solid year, I would say. Yeah. Since, yeah. yeah. I feel like how many in your house that I met you too. Oh right, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, yeah. Kim introduced us to um Kelly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was we awesome. Just... You all hit it off. It all became four. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm drinking um an apple lantern. It is a hard cider. Mm. A roasted pumpkin hard cider. So mm. yeah. It's really, really good. Really on the sweet side, which I don't normally like, but it's just mm. really seasonal and warm and yummy. So yeah, yeah. it's like suddenly fall today in Pittsburgh <laughs> today today yeah. like yesterday <laughs> was the fall equinox and now it's like 50 60 degrees and it's I don't hate it it's been like a stiflingly hot summer and I'm glad yes. it's sweater weather again yeah, for real. <laughs> um, so I don't think in any of the previous episodes I talked about how I got to where I am now I've been knitting and crocheting for a long time um, crocheting as a kid, just very casually at my grandmother's house, not really making much, just kind of fiddling around and doing what she was doing. And then I taught myself how to knit because that looked cooler as a teenager. Um, but again, like it was a very uh, intermittent kind of hobby. Like I'd get into it, knit a hat or a scarf, and then I wouldn't pick it up for months. Um, and then I think, you know, maybe like five or six years ago, I got a hankering to knit like an afghan, so I crocheted an afghan. <coughs> but then probably about three or four years ago, I got an amigurumi kit for Christmas of Star Wars characters. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. It had uh, yarn and the crochet hook for at least three or four characters. Um, step-by-step -step instructions and I did it and I was like okay I didn't think I would be able to like actually make something that looked cute and fun um my hats were all just like whatever <laughs> um but that kind of gave me the confidence that I can follow a pattern if I really set my mind to it and then I started looking into other like knitting kits like through Wool and the Gang and whatnot and did a couple of those and then rediscovered Ravelry and then just kept going up that progression of things and now I'm knitting sweaters and doing fun things like that. Um, but yeah, I think COVID for us all, it really kind of like put us down that rabbit hole of <laughs> seeing what we can do because we are so just like yeah. siloed in our houses. So it was a productive hobby to get into during that time, I guess. And good for bonding, I think. Yeah, for sure. You know, and reconnecting. Of, yeah. Because it was great. And then, you know, met Lindsay through you. And obviously we knew each other, but 
I see you more now, now that we're both knitting (laughs) (laughs) and hanging out and have like a reason to just like chill at the brewery or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It helps that we also both moved closer to civilization. Yes. 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 Definitely true. (laughs) Probably for me a year ago, I moved closer to the city and you a little bit. Uh, Just over a year ago, about a year and three months ago, I moved closer to the city. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Lindsay's still out in the boonies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But close enough. Close that, enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we will often meet at uh, the local yarn shop in Oakmont, the suburb of Pittsburgh at Yarns by Design. They have weekly knit nights. Mm-hmm. It's a really great shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like kind of the beginning of spooky season, and I'm going to try to maybe vlog a bit more during October because I have a yarn countdown box coming that I'll talk about. A little more later um so maybe i'll like record some mini sews here and there as i like start to open those boxes and actually work on some spooky knits but um yeah i wanted to kind of like bring the group together um because we all love spooky things mm-hmm. yeah, in our <laughs> way. so um to kick this off i have a few spooky surprises for everyone Ooh, just little love surprises odds and ends <laughs> so Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my okay. Kim, goodness. This is beautiful. I got wow. from this company called Knitting is Metal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are beautiful. I love this. Thank you. <laughs> And That's then, oh my uh, like needle stoppers. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Needle stoppers. Oh, That's like the cutest lizards. Yeah. Cute. These are like little <laughs> tiny black skulls, which is perfect for me. Yeah. So hard I to see on camera, camera but yeah. so adorable. Yeah. That's what I do with <laughs> They're very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, this before you awesome. go any further, this is so cool. I found oh this thin. <laughs> Ooh. And it says, sip, 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 sip knit. knit. I love it. <laughs> it's so from. cute. Oh, I love it. And I have one this. more of that one. It's perfect. And close. two others that don't match that one. So, oh. pick a card, any card. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, I got a turtle? Yeah, did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's oh, cute. that's cute. I like yeah, it. I like that one yeah, it's cute. Oh, so this is like a little like gemstone. So it's really tiny. That's a beautiful gemstone. Oh, wait, you got that one instead. We're both. So cute. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. I have lots. I'm going to put it put on, this on my, my bag. bag. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put it on my new bag. Do we want to do um, what we're wearing before we yes. jump into FOs? Sounds good. Okay. There Mine is my FO. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you go last. Mine is one of my FOs too. (laughs) So I'm wearing the Look at My Holes top. Um, It's a design by James and Watts. And I used this yarn. It's a plant-based combination of fibers. And I can't remember what all. It's a combination of right off the top of my head. But I think it's like three different fibers. But um, it's got kind of these like little tan blips in it so um it's black with like a little bit of interest but it's a really good layering piece Mm -hmm. it was super quick and fun to knit and i would probably make another one because it was just like fun and easy to uh knit up very uh what's the word uh not insta gratification but you know like quick yeah Yeah. it's very quick Mm -hmm. intuitive or Mm -hmm. easy to memorize yeah, you use like size 10 needles, so it's also that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I also, I it's supposed to be pretty cropped, but I added probably like two and a half repeats to the body. I feel like yours looks the same length as mine. Yeah. I actually kind of took it apart and added more length. I had to get another ball of yarn, but this is one of my FOs. Does it call for like any negative ease or positive ease or... I don't remember. It looks good. I like the fit. I think a little, a little bit little. of negative. Oh, really? Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. okay. I don't know. I thought it was more going to be more positive than what it ended up being. Um, yeah. Looking at some of the other projects, like on Ravelry mm-hmm. and Instagram, it looked like several were pretty cropped. And mm-hmm. I, I like, think it depends on what fiber you use, too. Yeah. yeah. I like mine, but like you, I'll probably need another one, and I'll probably go a size up just so I have a looser one. and. Yeah. Don't do the ribbing. I bet if you did yeah. like I'm gonna do that. 
uh, yeah, this it calls for like a worsted weight, but I bet if you use like a lighter weight yarn, it would make it really drapey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely would make one without the ribbing. Like, um, mm -hmm. was it Heather Hopspeed? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice layer piece. Yeah, just in time for it to get cold now that I've knit like a summer knit. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be good for a dress. I yeah. was gonna say it'd be good for a dress for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is. I'm sorry. I no, you, you were next. You, you were absolutely next. Sorry. I was just saying that's super cute. <laughs> Did not cut me off. All good. So um, this is the uh, carved pullover. Um, I believe it's by Emily Haver. Haver. And all, I think you're going to link everything, all our Ravelry pages and everything yeah. in the below. So, But yeah, this is um, a really fun, this was the first sweater I ever knit, but I actually knit it in orange before and I found this yarn from Yacht Yarns, which is a local dyer, and it's called PSL, and it's in this really great tweed, and um, so tweed. I, thank you, I just re-knit it in this um, pattern, so, and I also modified it a little bit from Emily's pattern, I um, made the neckline wider, and then I reinforced it with like a crochet chain, and I also made it short sleeve, because I didn't have enough yarn to do the whole sweater, but I really wanted to do this sweater, and I don't know if it's like coming up on camera, but there's definitely a little jack lantern face in the sweater so yeah it's a little faint in camera but yeah, yeah you can see it on my Ravelry page but yeah so uh, I'm very happy with it already introduced the sweater but I want to show some of my favorite details the pattern is called um, coastal sunshine and the one in the pattern is yellow that's something we've talked about a lot that when, when they name the pattern after the color they used it kind of it's just the the, na the pattern name just doesn't really carry on anymore. There's there's not much coastal or sunshiny about this, but I still loved the detail, um, especially down the side where it comes oh, together yeah. and the stripes come back it's up. Really pretty. That's fun. Yeah, and I, I love like that. And oh, it's like like a little chevron type. Yeah. A little like eye drop. And it, it does have keyholes yeah. down keyholes. the side that yeah. it's hard to tell. But. It also has keyholes in the neck, but I couldn't get it to lay. And this is my first neckline I ever knitted, so I'm forgiving myself that you can't see the keyholes it's in the neckline. It's not really that rolled, though. It's rolling honestly. a little. Yeah. Just a tiny bit, though. Yeah. Not bad. The Just a little. But I like it. Yeah. I yeah. like the rolled. It's like nice I, and loose. I wouldn't mind the rolled <laughs> neck, except that it covers up the um, keyholes oh, okay. yeah. in the neck, oh, yeah. the little yeah. eyelets. So, but yeah. And um, I was talking to the one of the ladies who works at McWalker Yarns about what I was doing when I was laying this out and wanted to figure out how to do a fade and she recommended the um that a fade that's in the pattern and then that's how I roll sock mm -hmm. and so it's not a perfectly symmetric fade mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I actually love that which is bizarre because as a structural engineer symmetry like rules everything and everything <laughs> everything has to be parallel and right angles and symmetric and that this fade isn't symmetric is awesome yeah is that your left brain okay. working there or? it does not get a whole lot of work no <laughs> it, it, it's awake now but I, I knitting has brought out my absolute love of colors I love colors beautiful mm -hmm. and a great fit yeah it's beautiful and imagine nice your style. eyes too <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that I kind of really like that <laughs> It's hard to find, th and that, I think that's why I'm really loving knitting because I can make what the colors that you can't find in the store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's great. Thing. I don't want it in pink. I'm gonna go make it in blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all right, I have the Vertices Unite shawl by Stephen West. Um, I made it out of Larue Cotton yarn. It's actually Larue Cotton is the brand. Um, she's amazing. <laughs> Follow her on Instagram. She's doing a lot of awesome things right now. Uh, and uh, this is the Love and Heartbreak collection. So she dyes up collections and then releases them and dyes them to order, basically. Um, and this is the, her bamboo linen base, which is a very nice base for very um, yes, mm -hmm. for a shawl. I did not block this, so that's why there's some. I don't know if I will block it, honestly. Yeah, I don't even think it needs it. It's, it's already amazing. has a great drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it does. It's in, is that <coughs> just maybe just in your amazing tension? 
Yeah, so this is the, like I said, this is the Love and Heartbreak collection, and sh so she releases a bunch of colors that kind of go together. So I got four that I really liked uh, for the main colors, and then she had a mini set. And I was going to just get another color, but I loved all the colors so I much. I love this. I love so this So I was crazy and did individual stripes, so I had a <laughs> lot of ends to weave in, but it, I, I think it was worth it. Here. So <laughs> much and I, interest, so so much torture. Yeah, <laughs> like and it gives it kind of like so a much color. vintagey vibe. Yeah, Ooh, it does. and I love right? green's my favorite color, and I love red and yellow as well. And I love red and green together, even though it's Christmassy. Um, I just love it. So it's very, but those shades of of red and green with that gold, they're very fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good. fall. You can make it work for a lot of different. Oh, so it really does pull out. What was it when when you did your vertices or? Right. You, yours. We yeah. always ref it. It made us think so much of um, the Star Wars, the Star Trek emblem. Now you've got the the color oh, of the Star yeah, Trek. That's the, the, they're gonna yeah, die. The first color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Vertices Unite pattern by Stephen West. Yeah. I started mine back in January, and it's been in hibernation for a while. Yeah. All Hopefully it'll come back up. Us. <laughs> yeah. Jen and Kim all did Vertices Unite. I was late doing it. Um, but I'm a mon monogamous knitter, so I get things done quickly because <laughs> I um, I focus on one thing at a time. The exact opposite. I get <laughs> very easily. Okay, so uh, more FOs, I guess. Yeah. Um, all right. So I already showed my holes, hats. Um. So. These, these are the, do you say it's Cyanoc mitts? Uh, yes, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if that's the correct pronunciation, but they have these cute little foxes so on them. So cute. And just a little stripe on the palm of them. And then, um, so it's stranded color work with, um, and then at the end you do the eyes and the nose just by duplicate stitch, kind of like embroidery over. Um, what you did based on the chart. So first time I've done duplicate stitch, but it was actually really easy Very once fun. I watched the YouTube tutorial. Um, and now I'm addicted to stranded color work and now <laughs> that's all I want to do in my life. So um, yeah, these are the first mitts I've made and they're really great. I so, really like this color. I didn't, whenever you sent pictures, I didn't realize. It didn't yeah, it's anybody. like a yeah. forest green. Yeah. It's, yeah. um, all three of those are Knit Picks palette mm. wool. Oh, okay. And, um. I'm going to have to dig out that. The Cyanoc like the mitts are. I have mine in my pocket. Since, so. since the, <laughs> the boys, um. I, I brought them in case my hands got cold sitting there. Go to a school district <laughs> whose mascot is the foxes. Uh, I think that we might need some of these to wear to hockey for oh, games. So <laughs> they're, they are really nice. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Foxy. The pattern <laughs> is by Nina Pomerenke. Mm -hmm. Pomerenke? Um, but really fun mm -hmm. pattern. Really cool. Fingering me. And, and yeah, cool. I've had this. This was one of my Make Nine knits. And, yeah. yeah. Happy I did it. Um, and then my other FL I'm gonna actually show with my one of my whips because it goes with it. It's like mm -hmm. a set. So Betty, you're next. Okay. Um so stay with the vertices unite Woo. train. Let's get this the right away. Here is mine, if you don't mind helping me out. Um, so I did block my <laughs> it Yeah, it's so like <laughs> It really, it really grew. If um, you block yours, it'll be many, 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 many more bedders. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so I just used, I used a couple like random Love skeins. This, this is uh, from Rags uh, Fiber Arts uh, out in, not like near, near Greensburg. Greensburg. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I think this is called Ain't No Way, and I love this color specifically. Um, Kim used this for a shawl, the Exordium mm -hmm. shawl, I think, and I mm -hmm. saw it, I, like, I have to use that color, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I went and immediately bought <laughs> another skein and didn't know what to do with it, so I used it in this uh, pattern. Um, these are just like leftovers from like just random socks, I think. Uh, the orange was an Emma's yarn. Um, I picked up in Cleveland, and the 
kind of purple yarn is left over from a pair of socks I made um, that we all made, I think. The, um, so cozy. Coffee top? Coffee top socks. Nice. Um, and the purple yarn is alpa from the alpaca company in New York, which is my hometown. Um, yeah, it's a really cool combo. Yeah. That's my favorite. Thank you. I love how oh. the vertices, it's really good to like just use up leftovers because you can just stripe in wherever and not necessarily have to use it for a whole triangle. Oh yeah, and you, can, even, you could color block down here. I mean, you can do a bunch of stuff. Um, and my patient, one of my patients uh, was interested in seeing my knitting um, and she named this Strolling Past the Pumpkin Patch, which I thought was so cool. <laughs> <awesome. laughs> so that's what I kind of named it. And yeah, so it's really, really warm and nice and a good, good layering piece. And yeah, you can use it as a blanket, you can use it as a shawl, you can use it, use it any way you want. You can all blanket. sit under this. Yeah. <laughs> it's gigantic. I love it. So that is one. Um, then I have just two other little quick ones. This is the knitting badge bandana. I forget his name, but it is like better in person as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the green is so much brighter see, in person. Like the green and yeah. the lavender oh. the other. Yeah, it looks really good, this lighting too. Mm -hmm. um, so this yarn um, was dyed by Rita from Ex Libris. I think you'll be hearing her name a lot this episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was just kind of a random de-stash skein that she had. I don't really know the weight or the color, but yeah, it's beautiful. And I made the bandana a lot bigger than, or I think it's neckerchief, but I call it a bandana because it's a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick knit. I think I knit this in like three days and I'm not a fast knitter. So it was just a really fast pattern. And it's really good to use up this like extra yarn that you have. So there's that. And then um, last one is just a random skein of Shirsty Cat I bought uh, when I was in York. I think it's called Amethyst Dreams. And this is the Pembroke scarf. And I just needed something like really easy. It's just garter stitch. It's super easy for like car knitting and like travel knitting. So I've been knitting on this since last like Thanksgiving, I think, yeah. And so just finish it now. And yeah, I like it. I don't know if I'm gonna give it away or keep it, but the colors make me really happy. So, <laughs> so pretty. So thank you. Those are my FOs. Thanks. I only brought this FO. I <laughs> don't have any other FOs. I have, I have I have box knits in my privacy. I, I I have an affinity for I've not seen them in person. Starting yeah, things, but not for finishing one. things. So I don't have anything else that's ever been actually finished to wear. Oh. I need to just buckle down and finish my um ranunculus. Yeah. Oh, you're so close. It, it, it has half a sleeve to go. So close. So close. I've been in a finishing mood, but I think it's because mm. I want to cast on all the things, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I have to finish the things so I can cast on. But I, I finished this months ago, but I never wove in <laughs> the, um, the ends, Yeah. but it got cold. And so I wanted to wear it. <laughs> so last night before I left to go to a meeting I had to go to, I sat down on my bed and I wove in the ends. And my husband was like, you're doing that now? Like, yes. Yes. I'm doing it now. <laughs> I mean, you gotta do it sometime, right? <laughs> it only sat on my nightstand since the first day, yeah, for three months, since the first day of summer. <laughs> I had a whole year between my finishing my Halloween sweater and then weaving in the ends. Yeah, so. see? There are no rules. That's no. why I love knitting. Exactly. <laughs> so I have a set that's a whip, but I finished two of the three parts. So oh a friend of mine is due to have a baby in December. And she asked if I was, she commented on one of my knitting posts or stories and asked if I'm able to knit small baby items. I'm like, of course. <laughs> so I knit this cute little hat. It's called the Peachy Keen Hat by, let me look this up. Uh, nope, not that. <laughs> I, I can't even comprehend. I mean, I, I know my okay. my boys were that small at one point, know, but but it like it has a stretch to it, so they'll be able to wear it for like a few months. They, 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 so yeah, sweet. look at how they were they were small. that tiny. In fact, the youngest had to wear a hat for the first two weeks. So he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't have an ounce of fat on him, so oh, he no. had to wear a hat and get his temperature checked. A little. I'm hoping this will be good for the the winter months. So but, cute. Uh, Peachy Cane Baby Hat by Chloe Rip, um, and then 
I'm knitting, coordinating little booties. And it's called Cozy Baby Booties by Running Yarn. So here's the first one. It has this little cinch eye cord so that it'll theoretically still stay on the baby's foot <laughs> because apparently that's a problem. I don't have any kids, but apparently that's a problem <laughs> it is. with baby booty staying on. <laughs> so a lot of them do place this uh, cord. You do these eyelets around yes. the ankle. So then you like make an eye cord and then weave it through the eyelets. That's but what should do adorable <laughs> and baby <laughs> items are like the best instant gratification mm -hmm. projects because they quit they are so quick to finish so i'm on the second booty and have i just started on the top of the foot so i have like the bottom part mm -hmm. and this yarn is by it's a collab yarn by fashion school oh, dropout yep wow. that was the collab with black pearl magic for yes. Maryland Sheep and Wool, they had a pop up at the Knot House in Frederick, Maryland, um, around Maryland Sheep and Wool weekend. And this yarn color is called Yarnable. So um, it's kind of perfect for baby knits. Mm -hmm. I started a pair of socks and I got one sock done and then decided I'm going to use this for the baby knits. And then if I have enough for the second sock, I'll make the second sock. <laughs> but if not, oh. I'm not going to sweat it because I, I, I much prefer it for the baby knits because it's just adorable. It's but it has beautiful. like all these like kind of bright pink, but mm -hmm. then pastels too, like pastel blue and yellow and little bits of, lips of orange. It's really fun to knit with for that I love how reason. it pulls, the colors pull in mm -hmm. a smaller item. Yeah. 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 It's like confetti, but just I bought that yarn too and now I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> it actually came with a coordinating set. It comes with a little uh, like uh, sky blue, I guess, mini mm -hmm. that um, I did use for some stripes and details on the one sock I did make. So. Um, second whip is one that I'm going to bring out of hibernation starting now basically <laughs> uh, I started this sock Some last things. year and only knit one and then I was just so over cabling with socks I was just over it Ooh. so oh, I no. started the second one um, and I only got the cuff done but I just need to finish the second sock it's a spider sock oh, yeah. so it has this like big spider motif on the front <sighs> but lots of cabling, as you can mm -hmm. see. And then the back has this really fun, like yarn over texture. Um, it's a gorgeous sock, gorgeous yarn. Mm -hmm. It's Madeline Tosh uh, in the colorway Jade. I don't know what base it is. Uh, Merino Light, 100% superwash, but it's almost like this glowing green. So now that it is officially spooky season, I'm going to finish the second sock. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, that's a good sock. I knit them last year. Yeah. Yeah, I love those. I did omit the uh, little baby spiders on the top yeah. of the foot because I still wanted to be able to wear shoes with it. And mm. I figured that would bother me. Yes. But um, this is Spider Socks by Terry Knight. It's a free pattern, I believe, right? Yeah, yes. I think so. It is one size mm -hmm. though, but I'm sure you could modify it if you yeah. need. Yeah, like needle size or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, or like. Yeah, yeah I want to knit it again Pierce. without the, the little spider, so. Yeah. That's a good idea. Mine are huge. Oh. <laughs> but they're like house socks, which is fine because yes. I, I yeah. do do the little spiders, so. I like hand knit socks, so many of them just like eventually stretch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did go down in like most of my socks from like 64 stitches to 60, which kind of helped. Yeah. We'll see how that wears over the course of time. Um, I'll show this one last, but um, my next one is a sweater. Uh, I'm almost done with it, basically. I've got one of the two sleeves done, so I'm on second sleeve. Oh, wow. But this is the Wanderling sweater by Isabel Kramer. So it has this V neck, and I haven't put the buttons on it yet, but um, you do get buttonholes in the little neckline there. And then attach two buttons and then I made it a three-quarter sleeve so this comes just below my elbow when I tried it on um, there's garter stitch detail 
um, on the neckline, the bottom hem, and the sleeve hem, and then mock cabling on the raglan, which is really pretty. And then along the sides, you can see that there, and then this big panel of mock cable on the back that actually shows the raglan a little bit better. Um, but it's knit using Ex Libris yarn uh, in her Carson, I believe, BK base in this colorway called Newsprint. I love it. Which is like a white, a very light silvery gray with dark gray and black speckles. Yeah, it is the Carson Superwash Merino base. So, so close to being finished, but I wanted to finish the holes top and the box mitts. <laughs> So all, the I, <laughs> knit all the things there's only so much time in the day right and then lastly i cast on a new hat because i've just been itching to like make a hat and i had all these different yarn choices and going back and forth that changed my mind a thousand times but i cast on the ghost ranch hat by andrea mowry and it is um it calls for sport weight, a combination of spin cycle yarns, but I'm using um, Quince & Co. sport weight, um, not sure what the colorway is, oyster colorway. This is a pretty soft yarn, it's 75% American wool, 25% silk, and then I'm using leftovers, I use a Zobber ball. DK, it's like a DK sport-ish weight to make a pair of uh, socks. I'm getting all tangled up. But now I'm using it for the contrast collar. And you start with a brioche brim, and then it ends up, you knit it, I think, to about six inches, and then fold it up when it's done. But after the brim, you then do this mosaic collar work, similar to like some of her shift patterns like the night shift and shift cowl so you do these like color work flips for the, the crown of the hat so i'm having a lot of fun with brioche it's like fading pretty nicely and it's going to be reversible which will be really cool and it's like this the zauber ball is like mix of um like some oranges and reds and grays so so far i'm really liking it and i'm happy with my choice there <laughs> and that is all the whips I have. <laughs> okay, I just have one. Um, I saw. Oh, wait, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. One more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot I brought this out too. This is one I've been working on for a long, long time. It's a commissioned project from my friend Tony. It's the Doctor Who scarf mm. that uh, oh. I've been working on forever. Oh wow! There. But now I'm a little over halfway through, and. It's as tall as I am. <laughs> so, yeah. See wow. all of these stripes. It's just miles and miles and miles of garter stitch. <laughs> so, I can only tolerate so much of that before I get bored. So, I've been challenging myself to at least do a couple stripes a week mm -hmm. and get it done before yeah. it gets actually cold. <laughs> so that I can fulfill my promise. You're a very good friend. To make this scarf for him. I mean, he bought the yarn. Oh, the least I could do. He was like, if you're up for making it, I will buy all the supplies. So I, I think I bought all of this from Hobby or Hobby, however you say it. Um, a couple different bases. Sorry. No, Keep you're going. good. No, this is, this is your podcast. Too many whips. <laughs> um, so I, I watch, uh, is it this orange couch? Yeah. The orange couch. I can't couch? remember which oh, one. Gosh, I think it's, it's the orange couch. Um, and she <laughs> made a summer version of the Andrea Mowry pattern, um, Pink Fizz. And so I had some sport weight yarn, and I am also knitting a summer <laughs> um, Pink Fizz. So I love the lace. Thank you. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, I kind of, I haven't worked on it in about a week. I just, I was knitting a lot, finishing a lot of things, and then I just lost my mojo. So I will get back to it shortly, but um, I really love the yarn. This was also from Ex Libris. Um, this is like a silk and wool knit or um, blend. 
and she like over dyed it she was going to use it and then she kind of sold it for a really good price and i bought it and i love it so yeah so this is my only whip right now Ooh. yeah it's so pretty that is a nice that, i'm guessing that's one of a kind or was it yes a i think it was i think it's like <coughs> over dyed unicorn and i think that might be an mm. old colorway of hers but i'm not really sure but yeah it's so soft the yeah. silk in it it's gonna drape really really well mm, so soft so squishy yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's my look. Very monogamous of you. I know, this is really a change. Normally I have five. Right now. It's already out. So, I left the two t shirt sweaters that I'm in the middle of at home because they're probably going to get not retired, but they're probably going to hibernate for a little I, while. Okay. Because I was in love with this one. I made a hat a few weeks ago, or a few months ago for my husband. And the pattern was by um, Melanie Berg. And she had a knit along um, for her Desperate Housewives sweater cardigan. And I loved the cardigan. And every time I saw it go by, I'm like, I have to do that. I have to do that. I have to do that. Um, and I had some yarn that I had picked off of... Um, Etsy earlier in the spring, it was an Earth Day fade um, from, it's from a dyer in British Columbia, and I will give Kim the name so she can put it in the notes because now I'm blanking on it. So I combined her, the, the um, Earth Day fade, which is a Donable Tweed, and this um, gray called Distant Thunder by Victoria House to make what is becoming, very slowly, I'm only a few stripes in, my Desperate Housewives cardigan. I love those so colors pretty. together. Yeah. Oh, this is really nice. It's already very soft. Oh, it'd be nice. It'd be warm, but still also like lightweight, so yeah. it'd be really useful. The, the pattern is written in sport, mm -hmm. but I had this, um, fingering weight so that, that I wanted to use so when I um, I went up a few sizes in the pattern yeah um, thinking that if I did that in a smaller yarn I would get something that fit and so far it fits so I'm happy with, with that result and it'll end up having um, a ribbed strip of buttons and buttonholes too and so I'm now on the hunt for adorable buttons to match this color combination of Blues and greens and grays, which are my favorite colors in the world. And just holding this, these colors just make me so happy. Matches <laughs> <laughs> this one. It just blends right in. <laughs> I am not creative in my color choices. It literally you know blends what you in. Like. I you do. Have, you have yeah. a color type. I have a color type. You know you like. Yeah. Yes. I have two whips. start with my socks. Um, so these are the DRK uh, Everyday Sock by Andrea Mowry. I have one done. They're very funny looking. <laughs> they're, they're just, yeah, the knit to yes. pearl too on the DRK mm -hmm. socks. It's so hard to show them. Yes, and this yeah, is um, nice. Vegan Yarn, which is the brand name, and it's their Pleiades. I don't know how to say the say the base but it's platies. I think it's bamboo cotton elastic sock um, bait, vegan sock base. Um, that's nice. It's my second time knitting a sock with this base. Um, and then this one I'm flying through. I just started it last weekend and I have Ooh. Ooh, oh, that's the front. The one. Oh, yeah. So this is the nice. de chain. Um, I can't remember what the name is, but we'll link we'll link it below. I have it to send Kim, but uh, yeah. So it's a nice, very easy lace on the front. So this is the front. It's seamed. I'm working on the back, <laughs> and you're just connecting the front and the back, and then adding sleeves. Um, and I'm using Taki Yarns Newport Base. It's a linen cotton bamboo blend. I want to say it's super soft. Ooh, yeah, that's really nice. so soft and squishy. Super so soft. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's their black color, but it has like little specks. It's getting dark, but it has little specks of like lime green and um, yes. pink 
or blue or something. Yes, when you'd send us pictures, but the lime green is just, yeah. just jumps out. So that's exciting. I'm excited to get it done, which I'll probably get probably done this weekend. <laughs> yes. yes. You're so You're quick. Yeah. You finished that. Well, the, the, I just have stockinettes to do now because it's yeah. just uh, mm. the back, rest of the back and then the sleeves and the seaming will take some time. But that's I know. Like, I brought out some Halloween decorations from the basement and now there's like orange glowing behind you. <laughs> I Perfect. was way too lazy to actually hang these anywhere, but they're just like cute little pumpkin <laughs> light. Look how they're lighting up. <laughs> you can't see them on camera. You're, but it's well, creating a, uh, <laughs> a glowy ambience behind <laughs> us. Yeah, before it gets too dark, I kind of want to... <sighs> Shout out this really great beautiful. So, oh, I love the greens, like glowing. Yeah, yes. dark. I would um, glow in the black one. Yeah, <laughs> you, <probably would>. yeah. <laughs> you should take it to Necromancer. I should. Yes, I bring should. My just beautiful. like set it up. <laughs> you know, I love it so much. So I approached uh, Brie from Moon and Yarn, um, gosh, months ago in advance of Halloween, and just said, "Hey, can you do like a custom weaving for me? I really want a crystal ball." So like I have like a crystal ball tattoo. I don't know if you can see it. But I wanted it to match, and she said absolutely. But I don't really have like a, a loom for it. Like just you know, give me some time to find it. I'm like that's fine, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, sh this is her hand dyed like Halloween yarn at the top and the bottom, and she used this um, velvet, and I feel like it looks like how the like smoke, smoke kind of rolls yes. across. Um, a crystal ball so anyway she ended up gifting this to me like intensely generous and sweet and wow. like just the best experience I have working with her and um she's just a great person so yes. definitely yes. Re highly recommend Brie from Moon and Yarn it's it was just wonderful to work with her and then this is just like beyond what I imagined it's beautiful so thank you if you're watching amazing work I she also has. have one of her weaving which is beautiful and yeah. I just saw that she did that like giant one, like oh my the biggest gosh. one. It's like as big yes. as this porch. Yes, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah, super it's such talented. Unique, uh, artwork to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. check her out. Um, we'll link to her and her shops in the show notes as well. And she and another local fiber artist also have a podcast called the Woolies Podcast um, with her friend Haley, who um, knits sews. I know she started making some project bags recently yeah. Yeah. and is a tattoo artist who does all the creative things. Yeah, they have yeah, a fun they're podcast. They're so talented. And then they, they usually do an episode once a month or every couple months. They always have some fun things to show. Yeah. The, did you say what it is? The yeah, Woolies. the Woolies the podcast. Yeah. yeah, they're great. I watch every episode. Yeah. <laughs> some local fellow Pittsburgh makers. And then, let's see, so lastly, wanted to talk about some upcoming project plans. I do want to finish my Make 9 for the year, so I have two more things. I'm going to try to finish one, but I'm not confident I'll finish the second one. <laughs> They're both sweaters. So, I really want to make the Sorrel sweater by Wool and Pine Designs. Mm -hmm. So, that's going to be my next big cast on once I finish the Wanderling. So hopefully within the next couple weeks. And the other thing on my make that is the Yoga Cardi by uh, her name? Uh, Annie Lufton, but I don't remember what she goes by. Boho. Boho Fiber. Fiber Co. Co. Anyway, it's a long, cozy looking cardigan. It is worth the wait, but I don't think I'll end up getting that finish. If I do, great. If not, not going to sweat it. Um, but I think next. I'm going to cast on another color work project. I really want to do two different cowls. One with my Mothman yarn that I've had since Ooh, last year's Pittsburgh yeah. Knit and Crochet Festival. You can't really see it because it is getting really dark here. But it's this mix of like gray and like dark purple, worsted so weight. So West Virginia. Isn't it is. Some red, like pops so of red in there. West Virginia. I, make um, I think it's just like purple. Is it purple? It's more purple. It's really but cool. it's by Dye Mad Yarns. They're Jenny Worsted. She did a Krypton series. And of course, being from West Virginia, I had to get the Mothman color. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. And I just ordered some yarn to make. I'm waiting for this cowl to come out that has a ghost moth on it. It's currently in testing, but I found it on Instagram. Yeah. So hopefully 
that'll come out and I'll make that. Uh, but I ordered some like bright, yet like lemon zesty yellow. <laughs> I forget the name of it, but it's by Brooklyn Tweed. It's their tones. I ordered it from Yarns by Design. Um, so I'm going to pick that up in the next few days. And then I also ordered this like orangey red, like a really cool fall mm -hmm. color because I want to also make the Autumn Doodle Cow by uh, Pacific Knitwear. Uh, her name's Jamie Lomax. <laughs> but she does all those like really fun color work stuff like the Autumn Doodle Cow, the 8-Bit Doodle Cow. Um, but I bought the pattern today and it's really fun because it's kind of like create your own adventure. She has all of these like charts so that you can actually choose what like doodles you want to put in like ghosts or bats oh, wow. or oh, nice. um, like cauldrons and coffee mugs like all the fall fun things so i'm going to use some soldatna leftovers i have like this mustardy yellow and this variegated grayish blue and black for my soldatna and i'm also going to use this orangey red that I um, also ordered from Yarns by Design. I don't remember what company, but um, I ordered that. And I think that's all of my upcoming project plans. Cool. Should we do the MCAL next and then we can yes. talk? Yes. Since it's getting dark and then we can. Yes. Just, so, yes. Um, yes. As yes. probably all of you know, every year, Stephen West does his mystery knit along is probably like year 12 or 13 at this point so that yeah. is starting in a couple of weeks very excited like two weeks yeah. yeah two weeks very soon um so excited i participated last year i'm not going to participate today or this year <laughs> um because i just have way too many other things in my brain but mm -hmm. i'm excited mm -hmm. to see what they what the pattern looks like and what their palettes come together like I predict a lot of cabling. Yes. Because it's called twists about and that. turns. <laughs> and That's turns. why I wanted to do it. <laughs> and he <laughs> says you need a cable needle because yeah. I watched yeah. like the preview video. So. Yeah. I'm trying to oh, mess sweet. with the lighting. But there you go. Yeah. Ooh. Here, let's see if we can. <laughs> oh, now you look like <laughs> too spooky, but. Okay. So okay but it helps with the show showing the colors. Yeah. Um, so this is the color. These are the colors that I chose. Um, this is Weathering Heights by Ex Libris. It's like a really nice speckly oh. variegated yarn with like greens and purples and then I picked those colors to kind of pull out with my solids so this will be the main color I think this purple is from Malabri Malabrigo it's mm. the ultimate sock and this will be the contrast and then this green um, from Ex Libris is called Renfield and this will be the um, what's the accent yeah so I have two of, two of these two of the purple and then one of the green so yeah, I'm excited. This will be my first mystery knit along ever. I figured nice. it was a good one. Yeah, his are always fun and exciting. And he always puts out their like weekly videos mm -hmm. for like step-by-step -step instructions on the clues. So like, you'll always know what to do. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I did my first with brioche it. last year <laughs> during that shawl. So. Uh, I just had those gigantic baubles too. Oh yeah, and the baubles <laughs> yeah. and those like shrimpy little things. shrimpy things. <laughs> <laughs> It was quite the adventure. I, I did not finish on time. And but... learns that we call them shrimpy things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, the so... shrimpy things were a point of contention yeah, for everyone. people. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first uh, Stephen West knit along too, and I probably wouldn't have done it, but this like made me want to knit more Stephen West. And you wanted to knit with me. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got from Vegan Yarn this Alburio. Uh, base which I've never gotten before um, and it's a cotton and bamboo blend so I got this is deep mood I thought it was black but it's more like of a deep blue which deep mood makes makes sense um, and then this is manga dark um, which probably is not picking up at all but it is out. has like speckles yeah. of like which, orange and blue yeah so mm -hmm. and it has like a little bit of pink too so it will tie the in with the blue together. I'm just not a big blue person, so I was hoping for a black, but yeah. it, it's going to be fine. Very Clemson. And then this is my yeah. accent color, 
which is the year of the cat, which is a nice orange. Mm. I love that name. It's a good combo. Yeah, orange and blue just go so well together because yes. they're complementary colors. Yes. Yep. So yep. they just go great. And it's yeah. great contrast. Yeah, and I've actually looked up projects with this deep mood color and it looks black. So it's so. It's it's it might just depend yeah. on the sunlight. And yeah. it might have like some variegate, uh, variegated of black. It might, well, might be one of those so. colors that's black in the sunlight, but blue under, under yeah. like in store yeah. Yeah. light. Yeah. 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 And yeah. my lighting professor from college will be ashamed of me. I don't know what that's <laughs> called. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll be exciting to follow along. Um, I'll probably like follow the hashtag on Instagram just so I can see everybody's progress as yeah. it goes. Because I don't have to worry about spoilers either. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think I mentioned there's a countdown box that Ex Libris, mm -hmm. our favorite local dyer, is releasing. And I think in her email newsletter today, she said it was shipping next week. Next week, yeah. So it should be here for the beginning of October to count down to Halloween. I'm so excited. And I have a few things brewing in my head that I might want to do with it, but we'll wait and see what the colors ended up, end up being like. Yeah, I'm getting it too. I think I'm gonna do stripes unless the colors are like really long for that. Yeah. But that's what I'm kind good. of thinking. Yeah. By Andrew Mowry. And then there's also a knit along. She did one during the summer with Yarns by Design uh, Knit Shop here in Pittsburgh. But um, during the summer, it was a sock knit along. And this time, it's just gonna be knit anything. But she's releasing a few special bases at Yarns by Design. So I think, I don't know what all the details are but <clears throat> she's going to have yarn available at the beginning of October and it'll I presume go through October yeah and last time there was a raffle if you posted it and tagged the shop and you won the last I raffle won. I don't know if you can see it but I did bring my winning yarn nice. so I won like a really great project bag and some yarn and some other great things that Natalie threw in there and um I got a heel toe sock set in, I don't know if I can hold this closer or not, um, in Dracula and, oh, I don't know if this is It's not work. working. It's not I working. Think, I think but, my light is making it worse. I thank love, you. I there love we go. the spooky so, ambiance oh. without light, but yes, I was making it yeah, worse. Yeah, the gray <laughs> is Dracula, oh, and it's got like these great like, red speckles in there, and mm. then the uh, red contrast is Mina Murray, so I cannot Beautiful. wait to make some really fun, like some fun socks with this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So I was very happy to win. <laughs> that is exciting. She does yeah. such amazing work. Like her yarn, just it's yeah. She has such a way with the colors. It's all moody but awesome at the same time, mm -hmm. and her pooling is just like very even even and consistent yeah yeah that's really yeah she's very talented and then she's gonna be also there's a, a festival this weekend called bitchcraft at the Pittsburgh Convention Center um, but she will be vending there along with many others I think it's all kind of like witchy and yes. occult I can't themed. wait yeah I think so yes I'm not yes. sure I'm gonna go I'm gonna try to but we also have tickets to Oktoberfest on Saturday, so mm, it all yeah. depends on <laughs> how I'm recovering from that. Because <laughs> it's at uh, one of my favorite local breweries called mm -hmm. Necromancer Brewing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, um, we have a couple fiber arts nights on the books. I skipped September because everyone was kind of busy coming off of summer and vacations, and I had a lot of things going on too. But um, we have some dates for October, November, uh, October is Wednesday the 19th, and November 16th, which is also a Wednesday, figure change it up, and then maybe we can get some of the people that normally go to Yarns by Design to pop On by. Thursdays, yes. Hopefully. Lee, talking to you, P.S. Lee Nitz, <laughs> who also has a podcast. <laughs> yes. And Dee 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 Smits. Smits. <laughs> <Dee> Smits. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We love all those folks, but I know that it's hard to like it not is. go to the yeah, midnight it, where you're already working. And they have, their <laughs> midnight is really great, great yeah. group of yeah, yeah. This is really nice group. It, it is. is. Yeah, yes. thank One you for faves. convincing me to come. I'm, yeah. I I love it. It's yeah. the best. And sometimes they have snacks. Always a perk. 
Yeah, but <laughs> just have chill and talk fiber arts or vent about stresses going on in your life. So, um, I don't know. Is that all that we have? Jenna, well, so? Jen, we, did you want to go through your next ones? Um, oh, oh, yeah. I can skip it with the light. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm okay, okay with that. Yeah, yeah I can hold my tail. Next time. Yeah. Because yeah. we'll do yeah. maybe like a spooky season wrap up with our oh, admins. Yeah. And then then like, I will have to start yeah. mine so that I can show so, it. Uh, spooky projects. Do you guys have any like spooky myths? That you're yes, and that's the one I can't wait to. Sh I wanted to start it tonight, okay. but it got in my way. <laughs> I have been meaning to start a. Um, it's a spider web like um, table covering Ooh. for my for an altar. Yeah. Um, and I haven't. I, I, it's a, a gorgeous. I won't be able to show it in the light, but a gorgeous black with purple and silver Ooh. lace yarn to make this altar and I, I really want to start it but every time I, I it is a challenge and it's to, it, um, every time I start it um, I get frustrated and not undo it because it just starts on um, three millimeter double pointed needles start out with nine stitches Ooh. and you just keep going and I think I get three rows in when I was just like nope that's wrong <laughs> better to notice it then and yes. kind of get the hang of it yes. plus like at the beginning especially with VPNs mm -hmm. like it's starting a small circumference it's like fiddly so. it is yeah. I think one of these times I just need to accept that it will look right when I get like 12 rows in and just go for it but I haven't yet so that is neither that is not a whip because it, I have yet to get past row 3 <laughs> future whip yeah. I, future I whip. also have um, a vegan spooky box coming from LaRue Cotton. She did a box based on Disney villains, so Ooh, I'm excited for that. Cool. It's going to have like stitch markers and other goodies involved cool. as well, so mm. excited for that. Yeah, that'd be fun. That, that sounds like the one I did, the box I got. The, it's oh, awesome. your fangirl? My, my fangirl fibers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that actually is coming out back out of yeah. hibernation because I decided, oh, <laughs> you're allowed to. You're allowed to. Use my that looks different. My, my, my beer. <laughs> my beer. Yeah. That is only one. But that is a strong one. I think that's like an eight point six ABV. Um, but I did. Yeah, Fangirl Fibers July Pokemon box. So I have thirty one minis of different Pokemon fibers, and I've been making a blanket out of it. Um, so I was gung ho when they first when I first started beginning of July, and then I set it aside knowing that. It's hockey season now, and both of my boys play hockey, and it would be a really good one to take with me to the hockey games. So it's time to bring that one back out yeah. of hibernation and start strength yeah. number four. So it just turns into a blanket. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It, 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 multifunctional. Yeah, multifunctional, <laughs> yes. I will make my own warmth as the season goes on. Perfect. So that's, that, I can't wait to bring the one out. Yeah, 31 different Pokemon colors. It's so fun. Yeah, nice. I know, I wanted to start something for spooky season and like, knit some just like a basic cow with some Halloween yarn mm -hmm. but I'm gonna just like dedicate myself I think to the mystery knit along this year yeah and those colors are kind of Halloweeny, so I feel yeah. like it kind of it works yes yeah that'll be fun and if you get itchy. frustrated and decide you need a break from it yeah you can always cast on exactly the that's what Halloween cow. <laughs> terrible problem exactly. to have I know <laughs> I, I am such an enabler like yeah cast it on do what makes you happy <laughs> <laughs> such an enabler like, that's what you need. Like, you're not feeling being on Sleeve Island, just cast yes. on something new. Yeah, it <laughs> it right away. <laughs> yeah. And even if you just cast it on and knit a few rows in and then frog it, yeah, that's okay too. Right. I, I love that. I frogged that pair of socks I started because it just wasn't me. Sometimes the yarn com combo doesn't work because mm -hmm. I cast on Ghost Strand choosing mm -hmm. a different uh, contrast color and it was just the yarn was too thick and it wasn't working so ripped it out mm -hmm. did some more pondering through my stash and yeah i like the way it's going now a lot better <laughs> <laughs> when we get together next time i will have finished i'm reading knitting for anarchists oh. and i can't wait to loan it to each of these girls nice. i i love that it dissects like the basic physics of knitting and as a 
structural engineering and materials nerd that it takes every single stitch down to well this leg should be on this side because and this leg should be on this side because and when you put the needle on this side it does this because mm. and be, just from that I taught myself yeah. how to um, knit backwards so I don't have to purl yeah and that that, that makes me really happy <laughs> I, should, I should learn that and yeah. it does help to learn the why and yeah. that's when brioche finally clicked mm -hmm. when I was like figuring out why you knit each row twice and how it was going to look because of that like okay it's clicking now yeah the yeah. why helps so much when I make mistakes yeah. because then I know how to fix it yeah mm -hmm. yeah the reverse engineering uh, really makes yeah. me happy knowing how to fix it is huge mm -hmm. I think that's like the level up of being a knitter yeah like learning yeah. how to knit backwards learning how to ladder up and fix your mistakes yeah, yeah read it and fix your mistakes yeah. and then continue being yeah. comfortable to drop a stitch and ladder down yes. yeah. that's like a different level too yes, like, yes. it's yeah. fine it's fine yeah I feel much more I feel really confident with that now yeah like, ooh, ooh, before I just like clenched that. for dear life like made like, is this okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fixing to do after the other day yeah, yeah uh, uh someone who wanted to know more about my knitting and mm. took handful of it so she could spread it out and see it i can't believe and it. i still can't believe she did this that makes yeah me mad. Oh, don't do not grab do it. not oh, touch other knitting. people's knitting do not touch um and every time she did that because it was a really fine th um weight I, I dropped two or three stitches and they zip, oh, they un, oh, unwound like a cheap pair of horrible. nylons all the way down. People and just so, have no boundaries. Like, come on. Just, what I should have done is just stabbed her with my knitting needle. <laughs> you should have. Yes, you <laughs> have a weapon. I, I have a needle. You're knitting. Come on. <laughs> should learn pretty quick then. Yes. Yeah. Don't touch. All right. Well, a note getting... to end on. <laughs> <laughs> Violence. It's getting dark and I'm ready ready for a refill of my drink. I don't think I said what I was drinking, but I decided completely out of character because I am normally very much a beer person. I would make an Aperol spritz because I've had the makings in my fridge slash uh, bar forever. So I opened up a bottle of Prosecco, so can't let that go flat. No. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. I'm going to go make another drink, but yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in and hopefully we'll have more spooky stuff to share with you very soon.